Hey guys, so I'm out here in my backyard messing around with my kayak and all the other household chores. So, um, as a lot of you know, I have a Hobie uh, Pro Angler 14. And there we go. And uh, previously I had a Castro Angler 12.6. Um, it's the red kayak that you see uh, quite often in my videos. So the uh, red kayak I used to transport on, on the roof of my truck. Uh, this one being so heavy, I usually transport it in the bed of my truck with uh, one of those T brackets that you could buy a hardware freight. Uh, the downside to that is, as you can see, uh, it tends to scratch. So every now and then I go back and uh, uh, wrap it in uh, tape. And uh, as you can see, it doesn't really work too well. So um, I like to make my life easy. I do have a dolly. A lot of people ask how the heck did I do this? Um, I bought two wheels from uh, Lowe's on sale uh, with a 36 inch bar and locking nuts. Uh, that thing is flimsy as you could see. And I made it intentionally flimsy because um, it's not supposed to be a permanent solution. Uh, as you can see, it's actually uh, detachable. So um, on the back of my kayak, and reason why I keep talking about PVC is because uh, it's relevant to this. So on the back of this, I have um, T and a three quarter to an inch. So uh, that entire contraption cost me about $22. Now this up here, I'm gonna get to in just a minute. But uh, onto the kayak itself. Obviously this thing is so heavy and so bulky. Um, a lot of people on the internet like to comment, hey, why don't you get a trailer? Why don't you, you know, wrestle it in? and be a man um, 150 pounds stretched over uh, 14 feet is a very very uh, heavy kayak um, lifting it to the uh, top of the vehicle is possible but as you can see uh, probably not the best thing to do um, especially lately now that I tow a, a travel trailer behind me so I wanted to talk to you about all of this nonsense up here so this is made by a company called Killshot, and you could buy this on um, Amazon for 130 something dollars, plus $30 shipping. Uh, this thing weighs about 45 pounds, more or less, and um, it comes with a winch and the hitch attachment, a foot. Uh, that thing swivels 360 degrees. It comes with a uh, pin that's right in there. And what you do is you detach it and you could swivel this thing to and from. Uh, this is actually meant for deer. Um, you could modify it to the height of the truck. Um, so in this case, you have a couple of locking pins. And uh, what I do is I actually crank it all the way up. Now you might be wondering, well, uh, on the picture, you know, on Amazon, it doesn't come with this rope. And there's a good reason why. Um, this deer hoist, and that's what it actually is uh, is rated 500 pounds and it comes with this strap much to uh, my surprise as i was messing with it and actually recording this video yesterday in the rain um, just as a prototype on the third try this 500 pound alleged uh, line uh, broken me or at least started tearing as you can see over there now uh, I could tell you firsthand that after going to Ace Hardware today and looking at straps that they carry this thing here is not rated for 500 pounds um, and the scary thing is uh, yesterday I was walking uh, walking under the load trying to film um, this video just to kind of demonstrate and uh, Good thing it didn't snap when I was under the kayak. Well, what ended up happening was um, my GoPro ran out of power and I went to uh, snap, well, swap out batteries, came back and heard a loud bang. And that was it. So uh, what I ended up doing, I uh, went to Ace Hardware and got myself a braided line. Uh, this one is rated to a thousand pounds. Um, and I intertwined it into, into itself. Um, there's plenty of videos on YouTube that show you how to do that. Essentially what you do is you take a line and let me 
see. Come on. Yeah. Okay, you take a line and see how you could sort of put your finger into it. So what you do is you just loop your line through it. Um, and just to be doubly sure, I used a, a paracord with a couple of uh, pieces of duct tape. So now it's not going anywhere. Um, on the actual winch, what I've done is I've uh, threaded this very rope in here, like so. And I've done exactly the same thing. Um, and here you, you can actually see what I've done. It sort of intertwines on itself. So how, how does this work and uh, what is it supposed to do? Uh, when you get to attach this whole mechanism, you could actually lift this up by this handle uh, with virtually no effort. So um, what I'm gonna do is uh, demonstrate a couple of uh, tidbits. Let me set the camera up here. Hopefully it. So you get those two locking pins and what you do is you detach them. And I'm gonna release the line. So the reason why I'm doing this is so that I could actually clear the height of my truck, which is uh, 72 inches with the Yakima uh, bracket on it. And the obvious benefit of this uh, collapsing in on itself is because you could actually take this whole thing and uh, uh, what you want to call it, shove it in the back of the truck. So. Now that we've uh, actually done that, take this pin, lock it into place, so now it's secure. And the way this works, just like any other winch, what you do is you start cranking it like so. All right, now on the top, it goes through those two doohickeys over there. Um, the downside to this deer hoist is that it wasn't really meant for a kayak. As you can see where the, uh, the bracket goes, it's actually further than the center of this kayak. So uh, you will have to sort of wrestle it into place. So uh, let me show you how I do this. And I'm filming this live just to kind of demonstrate you some of the challenges and issues that you have so um, set the camera here Notice how it started tilting like this. This is just a prototype. What I've done is I've just taken a strap and threaded it through the scupper holes. So for a prototype, this works just fine. Now, as you can see, it's fairly balanced. So those two scupper holes is roughly where the center of this is. Um, I actually had to put a couple of oars in the back to balance this out, because otherwise it tilts forward. Um, but this moment up here is where it gets challenging. So um, the issue is that because of where the bracket is versus where the center of this is, uh, at this very moment, when you lift it high enough, this handle starts hitting the kayak. So you're going to have to do some uh, inventive and creative uh, 
pushing and shoving while simultaneously spinning. So let me show you how I do that. Get my tripod. So this is about the the hardest part of this whole exercise. Now obviously it's it's uh, not advisable for you to stand on the load at any point, especially yesterday with the straw breaking and everything. Um, but that's just to get you an idea of what you know goes into it. I'm not really putting too much effort into this. And again, as you can see, it's fairly balanced. So um, let me go ahead and uh, speed this up for you. All right, now. Uh, those of you that advocate for the T-bracket, even with me using this green towel right over it, the bottom of this kayak gets crushed anyways. So this kayak is about a year old, a little bit older than that. So even with me using the towel, that's what the bottom of the kayak looks like. So um, usually what I do is I use this towel on that bar over there and slide it forward and I put another towel under the nose because otherwise the nose crutches. So um, as you could see the kayak actually cleared the height of the uh, vehicle. Now ideally and that's where we get into the whole PVC exercise. The problem with this thing is when they uh, created this mechanism they made it so that you could lower your tailgate up here spin this around and load the deer into the truck but it's not so good for the um, for the loading kayaks because what ends up happening is uh, you take the the nose of the kayak you put it up here as you spin this whole thing obviously uh, but the back of the kayak hangs and what you do is you supposed to release the winch while simultaneously unscrewing the winch while simultaneously pushing so i've tried it multiple ways and it just wasn't working out so that's why i ended up going and getting myself this now this is not glued it's not cemented it's not screwed this is again just a prototype and what i do with this is I put it right about here and I'll show you why um, the thing that I like about this is that this is made of uh, inch and a half PVC which is fairly sturdy schedule 40 obviously and another thing is I could actually walk under it that's why it's so wide so uh, let me show you what I do next Again, all of this is in the prototype phase. This is not like finalized by any means. See, it's kind of wobbly. But that's the trick. So next thing I do is I release the pin and I spin the kayak. The issue is that when you hover this thing over the kayak, as you can see, uh, only the nose of the kayak. Like, I literally wish that this winch was here, but it's not. Um, I guess you could conceivably cut it and put a hole into it. Um, 
I'm not sure if that's even advisable because you're gonna have to deal with uh, being able to spin this thing while simultaneously rotating and hopefully not hitting any of your tailgates or anything like that. So as you can see, what I do is once I lower this and once I put the nose on that bracket, I put the back of this kayak on this PVC rack. And again, this uh, breaks apart in like a second. You could put all of this in the back of the truck. So let me show you what I do next. And the reason why it gets shaky is because the back of the kayak actually rests on this PVC bracket. And I'm taking all, you know, all this time to show you, but I, you know, obviously this process takes only like a minute to load the kayak. Um, the weight of the kayak sits on this PVC. And what I do is I start pushing it from the back to the front um, while simultaneously slightly turning the kayak that way. Um, and loading this up. Now, uh, another thing to consider is that in this very moment, you need to unwind your uh, your wrench specifically so that you could take this piece of rope and actually extend it that way. Um, if this was an electric winch, you could probably just uh, push and press the uh, controller at the same time, but this is not, so. Um... All right, so what I've done is I've released slack in line, as you can see over there. And uh, again, this is just a prototype. Uh, it's kind of wobbly, but uh, it will get there. Um, ideally, what I'd like to do is somehow incorporate this metal bracket into this whole design so that instead of using all this PVC nonsense, um, but I'll, I'll cross that bridge when I get to it. So what I'm going to do now is simultaneously lift this, push this, tilt it, and load this up. Uh, hopefully in the easiest way possible. You have it folks. You have just very much successfully loaded this kayak onto that very roof without Really sweating it. All right, now I know what you're thinking. You're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't want this whole thing wobbling all over the place. And again, I keep mentioning that this is just a prototype. Um, all this is is just a strap that keeps running about. If you really want to do this properly, what you would do is you would figure out a way how to secure this to a single attachment point. Uh, there you go, folks. Um, I hope you find this video somewhat helpful if you like it. Uh, feel free to uh, share it with your friends and uh, thanks for watching until next time